WENJ, WENJ HD, Millville, Atlantic City. 97.3 ESPN presents the Sports Bash with Mike Gill. It's time for Football at Four with Adam Kaplan. Powered by the Inside the Birds podcast. I give my heart and soul to this franchise as so many of us do. Now live, this is Football at Four. Football at Four is powered by the Inside the Birds podcast. It's brought to you by Bet365. Whatever the sport, whatever the moment, it's never ordinary. At Bet365, Adam Kaplan from the Inside the Birds podcast is here today. You can get the Inside the Birds podcast on all podcasting platforms. Just search Inside the Birds and you'll find their YouTube channel as well. Hopefully you're enjoying your happy hour Friday football at four. Adam Kaplan is here, and the injury report is fresh, and it's got two key names on it this week, Adam, as we get ready for an Eagles-Jaguars tilt and out. Our Dallas Goddard, he's been out, but Darius Slay is also not going to play, and that means they're going to have to go into that secondary uh, for the first time uh, with a reserve out there and no Slay with a groin injury. You wonder how long or is this a precautionary thing, but they are the two that have been ruled out today. Yeah, it's exactly what we thought on Wednesday. Uh, we fully thought Goddard was not going to play. In fact, he hasn't practiced, Mike. He's missed nine straight practices. With that that hamstring injury, which he had after three three plays against Tampa, turned out to be pretty significant. Uh, and, yes, with Darius Slay, that was our expectation that he wouldn't play, and he's not. He didn't, he didn't work at all. So it's going to be Isaiah Rogers gets his first start for the Eagles. This is very important for Isaiah, who's, who's done a really good job. Great story, Mike, after – Missing one year of football, as everybody knows, due to the one-year suspension. Eagles, they had no idea what they were getting other than they what the tape looked like. They they were not allowed to talk to him after they signed him. They could talk to his agent. And then, you know, he gets in there in OTAs. He's in really good shape. He worked his way up from the bottom of the roster, and not only making the team, but he beat out Ringo for that third outside corner job. Clearly beat him, by the way. He wasn't really close to in training camp. Great story. You know, good for him. I, I, I don't know if folks have ever heard him interviewed. He's a really good interview, very thoughtful. Um, he's kind of what you call a young veteran. Let's not forget, he had a pretty significant role with the Colts. He was their nickel outside corner, uh, and now he's an out, strictly an outside corner. He's not playing slot here, which is interesting. So we're going to get a look, good look at him. And one thing, the one thing, though, when folks watch the game, whether you're going or we're going to watch it on TV, the Jaguars receivers are very tall. If they're playing, we'll get into their injury report in a minute. They're, they're going to have three to four to five inches on him, so this is going to be a big matchup for him. Yeah, I mean, obviously Goddard, he's been out for a couple of weeks. They, they seemingly, Adam, have kind of found their way there with Grant Calcaterra and, and Jack Stoll. They, they've they kind of figured out a way to use both of those guys. So the the loss of Goddard hasn't been as impactful as it seems it has, it, as it has been in past years. No, you're right. In fact, Mike, I remember two years ago uh, the same pairing, Jack Stoll, and Grant Calcaterra, was Calcaterra's rookie season, they filled in for an injured Goddard and did a nice job. But I think what you're seeing is Jalen is trusting – the trust is better, and you're seeing run after the catch. Now, we did show uh, on last week's Inside the Tape with Greg Cosell, which you could find uh, on any any platform, but the, the, watch the tape. We use the All-22. When Jalen was late on a throw, and Grant, he, he, he did get it to him, but he was way late on a throw – and Grant might have run for 20 to 25 yards instead of getting like a 7- or 8-yard gain. And, but bottom line is this past game, he was on him. And it was good to see in open spaces, by the way, and he delivered. So you're right, Mike. It, they're, they're, it has not been as impactful. You just never know when a guy goes out what it's gonna, how good it will look. So, by the way, uh, before we move on, Makai Becton has been cleared. He's, he's ready to go. Landon Tickerson's knee issue turned out to be nothing. Jalen Carter, look, uh, we, we put this out last year on our show. Jalen Carter had injury issues with his shoulder going back to Georgia. Teams knew about this. The, the, you just got to watch this. He's going to play, but is he going to be able to play a full game? We can't answer that. Uh, so something to watch as the weeks go by. This is the second. This is the the second time this season he's been listed with a, a shoulder issue. Now, getting to the Jaguars, Mike. What our understanding is, they think they're going to have both running backs, Travis Etienne and Tank Bixby, but they don't know for sure. They won't know until after pregame warm-ups. Usually teams, Mike, they work guys out for 1 o'clock, oh, actually the 4 o'clock game. So, oh, I, I would say around 2, 2 to 2.30, so probably around 2 o'clock, they'll work both guys out. If they think they're ready to go, they'll go. Um, it, 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 it's just they're, they're in a 
tough spot. Uh, they're in a tough spot. Those are their two top backs. Now, at wide receiver, Gabe Davis has had recurring shoulder problems. He came over from Buffalo. He's reunited with uh, Chad Hall, who is the receiver's coach in Buffalo. He's had, um, he's had to leave games early because of the shoulder issue. They think he's, they're going to have him. Brian Thomas has chest contusion. They do believe he's going to be able to play, but they're, they need to see how he responds to treatment over the next couple of days. And then Christian Kirk, one of the best slot receivers in the NFL, he's out for the season with a broken left collarbone. He had surgery. Former Penn State receiver Parker Washington fills in. He filled in for him last year. And then at left tackle, Mike, you've got Walker Little, who will start a second straight game for Kip Robinson, who was traded. And now they expect Ronald Darby to play with his hip injury. So as I get through all this, Mike, they've got major injury concerns. Their defense on the back end has been awful. And I heard your show earlier, Mike. I, I don't see a letdown. I, I see a team that in the Eagles will match up very well to the Jaguars team. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's, we're trying to find ways. We just had Michael DiRocco on who covers the Jaguars, and, and he, he couldn't really find too many paths to victory for them as well. I mean, he just said, look, they've been awful on defense. They've been awful in the pass defense and in the run defense. Uh, so, you know, the Eagles – look like they can pretty much find, pick a way that they want to go this. And you take a look at uh, their offense, you're going to have this offensive line with Tyler uh, Mackay Beckton back, Fred Johnson on the outside. Uh, but it's almost like they can pick their poison. Do they want this to be a Barkley game? They want to take some load off of him and go through the air this time around. Uh, that's what you're kind of be able to do. This is a terrible pass defense, and they're not very good against the run either. Mike, the thing is, Ryan Nielsen, they're, they're... – their defense coordinator, he did a really good job with Atlanta last year with not a lot of talent, and it just has not worked. It's been kind of stunning, to be honest with you, how bad their defense is. You know, It's like Trayvon Walker's got six and a half sacks, but you probably wouldn't know it. Sacks are individual plays. Sometimes we get too carried away with sacks. you got to look at every play and grade them. But their defense, it's not, it's not non-competitive, but it's close. They're really bad, and... The thing is, Mike, they spent a lot of money on their defense, and they have not delivered. And, and trust me, Doug Peterson's on the hot seat. I, I, I Trust me. They, they, and Shad Khan called the, called the coaches out for the lack of development. He said that, that there's got to be a better focus, and a lot of players are not developing on that roster. Um, when you look at player development, uh, is it fair to say that some of these guys for Philadelphia, it's been a rapid player development? All right, Mike, this is to me – People talk about hurts and the turnovers and no turnovers in the last three weeks. That's great. That that, hurt, that helps. If you go back 40 years, if if you win the turnover battle, you win 80% of the time. So, yeah, that helps, no doubt. But the real reason the secret sauce has been this rapid development. I want to start on offense here, and I, I think it's real. I think this is – I don't think this is like, okay, well, their schedule is great, and let's not give the players or coaches credit. These guys have performed. Fred Johnson has been an incredible story for a guy that – some wondered would ever even make the team. They would sign him to a two-year deal last year because they wouldn't take a good look at him. He could play right or left tackle. His best position is left. He did not play well uh, against the Bucks. He gave up a ton of pressures. But he played really well last week. They helped him a little bit. He did a great job. Tyler Steen, Mike, look, he didn't play well last year when he had to start against Dallas. He's played exceptionally well this season. They're in great shape here at that right guard spot. So it's either going to be Tyler Steen for the future and by the way, Mackay Becton's been a great story. Uh, again, we saw under Doug Peterson then in Doug's career, boy, guys were not developing. You look at Tyler Steen, obviously under the great Jeff Stalin. Steen has uh, been really good. This is a good story. Becton, who I mentioned, Mike, and then going to defense. Now, Moro Jones has been a great story in his, 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 his limited role, and so is Thomas Booker, former draftee of the Texans. Now, you only really know truly about a backup until they have to start. Then you then you, you see how really good they are. But in the in these sub roles, they're doing a great job. This is a good job here by Clint Hurd, the defensive line coach, who's new, who was with Fangio in Chicago. Nolan Smith, I know he's been a disappointment, Mike. I joked with our Patreon group on uh, Wednesday night in our live stream. I said before uh, about three weeks ago, he was playing like like a seventh round pick. Now he's playing playing like a third round pick. <laughs> So he's, he's, so he's improving. He's getting there, right? He's getting there. Yeah, he's getting there, exactly. Now, now here's the best story. This one, I'm, I'm kind of stunned at. If you graded their 11 starters, you probably would say Zach Bond has been their best defensive player, game in, game out. I didn't say he's the most talented. Who's the guy? Maybe one game he didn't play well. Zach Bond has come out of nowhere, and he, Greg Cosell told us that he's rushing more than people think. He's not doing what Van Kinkle did for Miami last year, but he's doing an excellent job. 
wouldn't surprise us if before the end of the season they look to extend his contract. Mike, this has been a great story, and, and let's go to N'Kobe Dean, his, his mate there playing inside backer. N'Kobe, they found a way to get him to play well. You know, in space he does not do well. He really struggled. Going back to training camp, it was that evening practice at the link. He, he struggled in space. He, he doesn't look good when he's out in the open and he's got to tackle somebody. It, it, it's not good. So, but he's played much better, much more disciplined. That's why the run defense, Mike, has, been, uh, has improved greatly. D- Dean's a big part of it. And then how about Cooper DeGene, who started three games, and it's a nickel roll, but he's not playing traditional nickel. He's, they're doing a lot of things with him. He's been awesome. This has been another great story development. Quenyon Mitchell has been so good, way ahead of schedule, by the way. Uh, r- really is, and he's shown he can play man coverage. They, they don't do a lot of it, but he's shown he can do it. And finally, as I mentioned, Isaiah Rogers, great story of redemption here for him. Uh, the, this is a, the, we're going to get a good look at him on Sunday. Let's see how, it, how he performs for Slay. But, you know, I mentioned all these players. I mentioned over 10 players, Mike. I don't remember. We've, doing the show, we've been doing the show with you for years. I can't remember a group of young players, mostly young players. We're talking guys, you know, in the league five years or, or, or less, developing this quickly. It's a really good story. Yep, and, uh, you know, one thing, you know, this is a battle of two teams to get off the slow starts. Eagles haven't scored in the first quarter. Jacksonville has trouble uh, scoring early in the game. Their offense has been a, a mess down there with all the injuries. Uh, Trevor Lawrence cut down his turnovers. He had uh, his five after averaging um, 20 per season over his first couple of years in the league, so he's cut that down a little bit. But, man, he has no one to throw to. So we'll see if this, this Eagles defense can – Man, continue. What have they been the best points against the last three weeks? They've they've really been one of the better teams there. What I'm interested in, you mentioned Nolan Smith. Can he become a more consistent pass rusher to where Howie doesn't have to think about doing something there on Tuesday? Well, see, here's the thing: they have enough players, but their pass rush. I, I, look, we're go, they're going to be a playoff team, right? Yep. Oh, yes. know how deep they're going to go. Win this game. Be- you got right, right. this game is one of those like you don't have very many gimmies on the schedule. A lot of coin flip sure. games coming up here. This is one of them, right? But they don't they don't look at it that way. Just so you know, teams never look at it that way. They don't go well. You know, this is a game we, we sure. we're gonna win. We got to sure. win it. You know, whatever. It's it's about matchups, and you know, we we talked about on our show this week. And in fact, Andrew and I talked about this on our our show today that dropped about you know the letdown. You know, it's funny about that. Coaches have told me over the years that they do worry about it. If, if a team's tape is really bad, they have to sell it a certain way where it looks better than it really is. And you, know, you just talked about Jacksonville. I, I know Mike DeRocco really well, and I, I, I heard your interview with them. I mean, it's if you cover the Jaguars, you see a team that's severely underachieving. They should be better than they are. Now, you mentioned the pass rush for the Eagles. It's getting better, by the way, but they don't have an A-level pass rusher. Out of the five guys who play, none of them are A. It's it's a pass rush by committee. Now here's you know the type of guys are, are available are Jadavian Clowney, guys are near the end of their career. You you like Josh Uche who just was traded right now. He's a young pass rusher. He's got a one year veteran deal. He's, he was traded from New England to Kansas City when New England didn't want him. He's a sub package rusher. He could help. But those are the type of guys you're going to find, Mike. You're not going to find the A level pass right. rusher. Well, and one of the things you know, yeah, everybody said how he always makes a deal. Where, I don't know where there's a guy on the field that they would supplant in a trade. Well, that's the point about the edge rusher. I mean, where are you really going to get an A-level pass rusher to do just like you you said? Safety, could they use another safety? Yeah, but you're not going to trade for one. You could you could use one more for depth purposes. And they still have to figure out what Sidney Brown's going to do. They don't they don't know yet. He just got back. Um, they, they they could use a veteran defensive tackle, but they don't need one on the 53. They could put one in the practice squad, so you don't need one there. Uh, they don't use a third receiver, though their depth at receiver is not very good. They don't need one. Mm-hmm. They could use one on the practice squad, sure. So you're right, Mike. Honestly, I, barring a – I'm not saying they won't make a trade. Edge rusher is one, certainly. Um, well, if I you just, bring in an edge rusher, Adam, that means almost like you have to not play – Huff yeah. and admit that that was a mistake. Well, that that's the one. It, it it would be strictly because Huff. If if Huff had been playing at a high level, we're not. It's not even a conversation because they have five guys who are in the rotation. Right. And now now he's basically a sub package rusher almost. It's it is what it is. You know we we like we we just mentioned all these guys are developing. 
and even Nolan Smith, we've been very we've been very critical of. He's developing. He's starting to. No, I don't think he'll ever be. He's not proven to be worthy of a first round pick, at least, but he's developing. Uh, they missed on Devin White. Now that was a free agent signing. They're they're out five million uh, minus whatever their settlement was. But the, the key is here that a lot of young players are developing. And, and like you said, why would you take some of these guys off the field unless you're getting a true upgrade? I, those guys rarely are available, Mike. It, like when they, uh, before we get out of here, remember when Jay Ajayi was was acquired? Yeah, he became more or less a starter, but it wasn't like he was the only guy. He was they just put him in a rotation. Some weeks it was clearly the guy, some weeks it was not. Right. It, but that's the kind of thing you can get. But you make a fair point, Mike. It's it, it could the the only area they really need an upgrade is edge rusher. And I I just I, you're not getting Miles Garrett, so it's just like what what do you think you're really going to get out there? All right, uh, the trade deadline Tuesday, the Eagles and the Jaguars. This Sunday, you can listen to the game on 97.3 ESPN. Football at four, powered by the Inside the Birds podcast. He's Adam Kaplan. Thanks, bud. Thank you. All right, Adam's course back on Tuesday. Football at four all next week.